，我是 Evan 周世耀，我是一个金融家，也是一个艺术收藏家和赞助人。So our family bought this house almost 10 years ago. This house has four levels and a garden. There were four bedrooms. We've turned the house into just one master bedroom and the rest is all uh, spaces and relaxation areas to enjoy the art. So my uh, family, from my great-grandparents to my grandparents, are collectors of Chinese ceramics and ink. And I started collecting uh, 10 years ago. My collection is around a few hundred pieces. Sarah Crowner is one of my favorite artists. Uh, the first piece in the entrance is commissioned by her uh, using her favorite flower colors in Mexico City. And it's a hard edge painting that references the 60s and 70s uh, from old masters who are all my favorites, such as Joseph Albers. As you enter, the living room, the main piece, and one of the centerpiece of the space is a piece by Nick Moss. And as you walk into the mirror, you kind of emerge yourself into part of the dance movement. In order to make the Nick Moss mirror panels and repaint some walls behind it to match the Moroccan blue. These two chairs are very special because they were once in my grandmother's home and every time, you know, we sit there, we have fond memories of our childhood with grandparents. The second floor is one of my favorite themes. It's a geometric abstraction. At Brown University, I was a major in applied mathematics and economics. So was, I was always a math geek. So applying math and geometry to art is actually a very interesting conversation for me. Wang Rei, one of the first contemporary Chinese artists who started Star Movement. And it's a 1985 piece, uh, which is a, inspired by Mondrian colors and also of Sihayuan in Beijing. On the other side, we have a Bridget Riley. Facing that in conversation is a Donald Judd. The top floor is my own little portrait gallery. Woman in Despair by Maria Farah shows the artist's empathy and respect for women working alone in foreign countries. with my favorite artist, Chris Hoon, to end the narrative. When I saw this painting, it really reminds me of the view here in Saikong. What he depicts is actually his family, his baby, his dog, his wife, sometimes, and what he looks out to, so houses and trees. We curated this room facing the, the trees and the ocean with a green carpet and matching furniture and some plans to, to blend in. I'm, I must confess, I'm kind of a workaholic. Art takes up most of my free time already. Uh, during COVID, um, I had the chance for the first time in my life to stay here for a couple of months. And it was so peaceful, actually. I really love my time here. And I love spending time with family and friends to uh, take a long walk along the Repulse Bay all the way to Deepwater Bay. Um, actually, that's one of the spots that I always walk with my father after lunch.
I actually liked to go on my own because sometimes if you go with others, you know, you get distracted and you lose focus. I'm honored to be a board member at the New Museum of Contemporary Art in New York and also the deputy chairman at the Hong Kong Art Center. Uh, some people say I'm too boring. But to collecting is a serious business. That's why I aim to bring amazing artists and exciting programs to Asia and serve as a bridge between the East and West. The relationship between a collector and an artist should be bilateral and mutually beneficial. There would be no Matisse or Picasso without the support of Gertrude Stein. My advice to young collectors is don't chase trends. There are so many different people in the art world to be careful. How can you tell? Use your common sense. Yeah. <laughs>